a hot minute since I've talked to you guys. So welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Libby. It's so nice to have you. We have a lot to talk about, to discuss, and to catch up on. This is going to be an entire little like life update from the past one or two months because things have just been so chaotic. I haven't been able to vlog or really be on YouTube. So I'm happy to be back. We are settling in a little bit, slowly but surely. JJ and I moved from Kansas to Houston, Texas. We're really pumped for this new little journey and this new chapter and this new space. So much happened before this move. So I'm going to take it back so I can start where we left off, which was three weeks ago. So I believe the last time that we had talked or the last time that I uploaded, it was right after my New York trip and after I went to go visit Courtney and got to see Annalise in New York. And then things got pretty crazy shortly after that. I'm gonna do a whole Q and A at the end of this video where you guys left a bunch of questions. So hopefully those questions are answered throughout the video, but I'll be sure to hit some of those at the end. I feel like I was just getting the house ready for a nice little fall season. It was about to be October and I was super excited for it. So we didn't necessarily have this move planned for a long time. To be honest, it was pretty spontaneous. There weren't a lot of things that kept us in Kansas, to be honest, other than the fact that we had been there for so long together. And also I'm from Kansas. I am originally from Wichita and then I went to Hutchinson Community College, which is where I ended up meeting JJ. He's from Florida and his first move out of state was actually to Kansas to play football. After that, we went ahead and went up to Lawrence, Kansas, which is where KU is, the University of Kansas. We both attended there. Once we graduated, after that, we moved to the Kansas City area. So we had hopped around quite a bit and we had experienced a lot of what Kansas had to offer. And to be honest, I'm so happy that I was raised in Kansas, but I definitely didn't see myself being there long-term. I think it's a great place to raise a family, but for people that are young and adventurous and want to try something new, I couldn't see us being there for the rest of our lives by any means. If anything, I think that we would end up in Florida. Like I said, this wasn't super planned. It was something that came up. And to be honest, it kind of started as a joke. So we started off October by going to Denver to visit my mom. We hadn't seen her in quite some time. It was like a year between when we had last seen her versus this most recent time. And we just needed to see my mom, hang out with her. And we definitely wanted to go check out Denver for ourselves. Every time I've really gone to Denver, it was kind of for like a work trip or to go visit the Gymshark HQ and things like that. So it was nice to have a chill little relaxing time there with JJ. That's how we ended in September. I got to go visit Natalie. I saw Chloe in person, got to meet baby Viv, which was fantastic. And then around like the 3rd of October, I believe I went to New York to go visit Courtney. And it was also a spontaneous trip. Honestly, when you find a friend that you're just like so happy being around and you just love sharing each other's space, I think it's easy to kind of just book a flight and go. And thankfully it was a fantastic trip and memories were made and I really enjoyed it. So it was cool that I had just before that gone to New York for the first time and she lives out there in Jersey. So got to explore a little bit, got to see Annalise, which was really fun as well. That's kind of where I left you guys off at, I think. So after that, we had come home and when we were in Denver, JJ and I were kind of just like dabbling around with this idea of moving somewhere. And the thing is that we have friends that are so close to us, they feel like family and we all kind of operate as a family unit. I hope that you guys can have friends that are that close to you, but you guys know JJ does music, his producer and also his best friend Lee also lives in Kansas City and JJ was like, well, I'm not leaving Lee yet. You can't leave Lee or anything like that. And that was like his one stipulation of not leaving quite yet was because they needed to be together. And eventually we brought up the idea to Lee and he said, let's go. Why would we wait here? What's going on? Once Lee was on board, things started picking up, I will say. So as soon as he was like, um, let's just try it out, let's go. We we're like, okay. So we started looking for places. We had been in the Kansas house for two years and in November, the lease was going to end. I think a big part of leaving and being so willing to do so is because we wanted to go for a long time. We just didn't know where. I don't know exactly why Houston felt right, but it's really the middle of where our family is. It's closer to Florida for JJ's family. And then my sister also lives in Dallas. We also just really wanted diversity. We wanted to have new experiences, be in a new place. And then a lot of our friends, which are boys that JJ used to play football with, actually from Texas and from this area. So we didn't feel like we were gonna be out here by ourselves. And then if you guys don't know, a Ajazi actually was planning on moving out to Houston. She had planned that way before I was ever like, oh yeah, Houston. The way that this came about was when I was in Denver, Ajazi and I were on FaceTime. She was getting into her apartment and everything. And I said, oh my gosh, like jokingly, send me some listings if you find some houses. She started to find some and she ended up sending them to me. And I, nowhere in my head did I think, yeah, we're gonna leave in the next month. We're gonna move out. No, our lease was gonna end in November. And I was really just gonna bite the bullet and be like, okay, let's just re-sign the lease. But by staying in Kansas, I think that we would have felt like we were just waiting 
waiting for that lease to end. You know what I mean? Like you're wanting something new, but at the end of the day, you just have to pull the plug and let it happen and jump and hope that you land properly. And that's kind of what we had to do. So when she started sending some listings and once Lee was on board, I was like, wait a second, can this happen? So we started looking and we found a few houses, which I really, really loved. A lot of people asked why we choose houses over renting an apartment or something like that. Honestly, since we lived in a house with a backyard and everything, it just feels right to have Bronx in a backyard. So that's kind of the non-negotiable is making sure that Bronx has somewhere to run around and to be outside and things like that. We ended up finding the place that we're in now and we absolutely love it. It's such a dream. So as soon as we decided that we are actually going to move, we let the landlords know at the Kansas house that we won't be renewing the lease. And with that, it was really game time and it was time to find somewhere to live because I didn't want to, I don't know, it was difficult because while it sounds nice to have that security of knowing you're gonna be somewhere, the lease was ending anyway and I didn't wanna resign it for six months or a year or anything like that. So it was really liking a lot of faith in God and hoping that things work out. And like I always say, what's meant for us will not pass us by. It ended up working out, but let me tell you, it was probably the most stressful and chaotic time for me. And I don't think that I felt that type of anxiety in a really long time. I knew that everything would work out, but when you're somebody that likes to be in control of everything and like know what's going on and do your best to plan things and all of these decisions are no longer in your hands, whether something goes the way that you're hoping that it will or not, that really puts a toll on your mental health. And it was hard to be excited. We were pumped for the move, pumped for the idea that we were going to be somewhere new, but it was hard to be so excited when you have all these things kind of weighing you down and stressing you out. I think that we ended up putting in the notice that we will not be renewing on the 10th of October. And that means that we had about 30 days to find somewhere to live. And when I tell you it was stressful, I mean, it was very stressful. And I knew that it would be an uncomfortable period, but I think that I underestimated how uncomfortable it actually would be. That is when things started getting real. It was time to start packing up our entire house. We have so many things there. We have so many memories there. Letting go of anything that we didn't need with us was top priority, making sure that we can have the most seamless transition possible. Thankfully, I did get to work with a moving company to get our stuff transferred from Kansas City to Houston. That was Bellhop. They're not sponsoring this video. I just wanted to mention them. We had to get our movers all figured out, but the thing was that we didn't have an address to send them to. It was just like, hi, this is gonna be the pickup address and this is the pickup date, but we don't know where to send them. So throughout this entire time of packing up the house, I was looking for places to go. And thankfully, we also did have an amazing realtor and it just makes me so thankful that we have such amazing friends and we have such a cool community of support and people around us. Our realtor, I'm gonna plug him real quick, Kyle Jefferson, love him so much. He is actually a Jazzy's boyfriend's uncle and he works out here in the Houston area and he was so helpful. We got here safely and that we really enjoyed the place that we selected. JJ and I also did not come to Houston to look at any houses because things were so chaotic back home. We put our full trust in Cam and Kyle to come to houses and to tour for us and to take videos and pictures and to let us know what they thought of the place. And it's so different seeing something in person than online because when we got here, we were like, oh my gosh, it's even better than we had thought it was. I'm really thankful that we had their help and their support because we definitely wouldn't have been able to do this without them and it wouldn't have been as seamless as it actually was without their help. Meanwhile, Ajazi is still in LA getting ready to move out here to Houston. It was really Cam that was doing a lot of the work and I'm just so thankful for him. Love him so much for even putting me in contact with his uncle because who knows how this would have gone otherwise. So when people ask, did you and Ajazi plan this? It wasn't planned for me and JJ to move in the way that we did, but it all kind of like fell into place. Honestly, my movers actually ended up getting to our house before Ajazi's did. She was here for about a week before I was. I, I don't want to say it's planned that me and Ajazi moved together, but low key, like I think our souls just needed to be close to each other. So while all this is going on and we're still finding houses and things like that, we're packing up our entire house. You guys might've noticed that I did go a little bit MIA because I was so high stress and it was hard for me to focus on work and show up because it's really difficult for me to show up as me if I'm not feeling like me. So I couldn't really put on this facade and act like everything was totally fine. Like, although it was very exciting, it wasn't something that I could be like, hi guys, I'm moving. All of these missing puzzle pieces are who knows where. I wanted things to be so solidified and every single document to be signed before I told you guys because I think if I would have mentioned that we were moving when we had just made the decision and things were still kind of out of place. It would have been even more stressful to have like questions and all of those things. And I think that waiting was the best option because I don't know, we've only been here for like less than a week and the welcome that we received is incredible. Like it feels like home. And I know a lot of times when you go to a new place, whether you're visiting or moving, you're just like, oh, it's gonna take a little bit to settle in and to feel like this is home. But the moment that we got here, even when we went to the grocery store, it just felt like we were 
were supposed to be here and we are just so happy to have so much sun and to have heat and we're just thankful for the little things right now in the midst of all of this about 10 days after we had put in our notice that we weren't going to renew we're still looking for a house it was time for me to go i had to go and i went to mexico it was my first time going to mexico and i went for whitney and stefan's wedding and it was the most magical just incredible dream of an experience to not only be there with the people that they love and that they hold so close to their heart but also to be in such an amazing place with people that are just so intoxicating to be around every single person i'm trying to explain this in the best way that i can and i've tried a few times but it's difficult when you meet whitney and stefan in person and you see the people and the friends that they invited to their wedding you can just feel the electricity that whitney and steph have rubbed off on their friends it's like i don't know the way that i would explain it is like genetics you have these two people that come together and everyone that they are surrounded by and everybody that that they cross paths with somehow have this little piece of them and every single person that i met and saw at their wedding had the same energy and the same kindness and love that they all exuded that steph and whitney do and i can't even explain how thankful i am to call whitney one of my best friends i had so much fun just being around her family stefan's family and their friends it's so cool because obviously the bride and groom are busy doing bride and group things getting ready for the wedding and all of that type of stuff we were kind of left to entertain ourselves to to an extent nikki was like my buddy for the trip it was so nice to be around her again and to actually hang out with her in such a cool place stefan's friends and whitney's friends came together and it was just like you can understand why Whit and Steph are friends with these people because we all just meshed as if we had all been friends for our entire lives. It was just really cool to be a part of that friend group and to create a new friend group and I just feel so close to those people already. So the wedding was just phenomenal. I loved every single person. I loved all of the details. It was so gorgeous and beautiful and I was so happy to be able to witness Whitney and Steph's love for each other. I already know that they are each other's person, um, but to be able to celebrate that in such a cool place with so many amazing people was incredible. That was honestly the highlight of my October and we spent three days out in Mexico in Baja, California, Sur. We went to the beach, we laid by the pool. We did so many things in such a short amount of time and it felt like never wanted it to end and it was just so bittersweet when it did end and I feel like I've gained family from going on that trip and I just feel so blessed to be welcomed into Wit and Steph's circle and to, to be one of their closest people. After the wedding in Mexico I came home and this is when it turned into be game time. Thankfully my first day in Mexico we ended up signing a lease. I was sitting in my bed and we signed the lease to this place. That's how quickly and kind of sporadically this all happened but I I knew that it was supposed to happen the way that it did. Of course, there had to be road bumps along the way, but it all worked out for the best and here we are now. So after the wedding, I come home and I get a few more gym sessions in. You guys will see that I'll upload a week of workouts that I was working on filming for you guys in the middle of the move and everything like that. Is curious about how I feel about leaving Mr. Ed and I love that man so much. Every interaction with him was just so golden and he's just a gym of a person. It's definitely hard to leave not only Mr. Ed and my gym and my friends that I've made there, but leaving our friends in general in Kansas and Kansas City is definitely the hardest thing. I'm broken that I can't go and hang out with Tyra so quickly and easily now but I know that we're supposed to be here and we're supposed to grow and we're supposed to try new things and she's so happy for us but it's hard when you leave one of your closest friends I think and I've never had to do that before really then moving day came and that was the first we were packing up all up until the first so mine and Myrie's adoption day is October 30th she was actually in Denver visiting my mom right before that with Mason then she flew to Kansas City to visit me and my dad for our adoption day on the 30th AJ and I ended up just taking Mason and hanging out with her. She spent the night over with us. It was quite chaotic because on the first is when the movers came and they were packing up all of our stuff and Mason actually ended up giving away one of the suitcases that I had packed with some of our clothes to the movers, which I didn't know. So we were without it for a couple of days, but we got to hang out with Mason. She's gonna be three soon, which is just so wild. I love that kid more than life. Very happy because my sister and her live in Dallas. So we are a bit closer now and I'm definitely gonna have to go steal her for a few weekends or something like that. 
and they came at 2 p.m. They were super prompt about everything. They packaged every single thing up and delivery was just going to be on the third at 8 a.m. At 11 o'clock at night, JJ and I are cleaning the entire house all day, making sure everything is fine and move out ready. Um, Bronx is obviously very confused throughout this whole process and he's like, what are we doing? I'm not sure what's going on. I took his power nap on the ground because the movers had already grabbed all of our stuff. I just packed up our blankets and like our comforter and our actual bedding and things like that. Took a little power nap on the ground, woke up at 11 p.m. It was time to go. Set off, I put Bronx's little hammock in the back of the car and he had never been on such a long car ride before. And so 11 hours was going to be quite the task for him. And he was definitely a nervous boy in the car. He definitely was a little anxious with being in a moving vehicle. Eventually he did calm down and he took a little nap. I ended up actually sitting with him in the back for a little bit, which was an adventure because I'm like sitting in the hammock cramped with him, just holding him and petting him. This is when things, of course, on our moving day, things get a little bit crazy. I was driving first and then JJ decided that he was going to drive because he was like, you should sit in the back with Bronx. So I sit in there. In our sixth hour of our drive out of 11, we were in Oklahoma, just about to enter Texas. We had stopped to let Bronx out to go potty. Then we had stopped to get gas and stuff. And I sat back in the front seat. We were probably like 10 minutes away from the gas station. We had stopped out in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Thankfully, there was nobody on the road. This was at 5 a.m. There was a man that was taking out his garbage cans, like the ones you roll out to the street. And he was taking them to to his work dumpster, I guess. He failed to secure them in the back of his F-150. So as we're driving, so weird that this happened, but we started this drive, both of us saw a shooting star and we just knew that that was like our sign that we are on the right path and everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna work out the way that it's supposed to. Not without a little hiccup though. So we're just driving, cruising down the road a little bit more. Then out of nowhere, I mean absolutely nowhere, this is a freak accident and I feel like this sounds like it's a made up story until you see the pictures, of course, because pictures or it didn't happen. Actually, it was for my insurance, but my untouched, unscathed car, ice, the man's trash cans flew out of the back of his truck and they landed in the center of our lane just out of nowhere. It was face down, so the open part was on the ground, the wheels were sticking up, and we were in the right lane behind this man, only us on the road, thank goodness. It could have been so much worse. JJ swerves to the left and it clips the entire front right side of my car. So the whole headlight got smashed into the car. The garbage can went flying, I think like two football fields because it literally just came out of nowhere. Thank goodness we're all okay. Bronx is all right. But what's wild is that imagine you're on a highway. You don't expect something like this to happen. You're going 70 miles per hour. A trash can out of nowhere lands in the middle of your lane. You try to dodge it. Thankfully, it only hit the side. But the tire or the wheel of the garbage can was embedded in my headlight. That tells you like how abrupt this was. I'm just so thankful that it didn't hit the center of my car. That could have messed up the engine. I'm glad that there was nobody else on the road. Glad that it was us rather than somebody else because while this is so inconvenient and so scary at once, I'm thankful that we have a way to obviously like things fixed and things like that. And thank goodness the man did stop. He said the only reason he did stop is because he saw a headlight go out behind him. And yes, that was us, sir. Thank you so much for stopping. But he did stop. He was a really kind guy. He was so remorseful. He felt so bad and honestly I'm just glad that all of us are okay And I'm glad nobody else was on the road and if it was gonna happen to anybody I'm glad that it was us that were meant to deal with it Honestly it gave us the insurance and all that so all that's being handled and I'm really really thankful that although we were in the middle of nowhere I'm so happy. I asked the policeman like is it okay if we drive my car still and he was like, yeah It's okay to drive. I was like, okay good Like all I wanted to do was get to our destination after this But we still had five more hours to go so I hopped in the front seat and I finished the the drive because as the trash can hit the car, it smashed the passenger side door shut. So it doesn't even open. So JJ spent the rest of the drive sitting in the back with Bronx in the hammock. I wish I could be making this up because it sounds like such a crazy story. But it's actually our real life. That's how we ended up finishing the drive and everything. We got here around 10 40, 11 o'clock. Our Wi Fi was getting installed. Bronx gave us a little house tour as soon as we got here. If you guys saw it on TikTok, we arrived in one piece. We might have lost a couple of headlights along the way. It's been a journey to get here. These last couple of months have been eventful, exciting, stressful, but all so good. And we're very, very happy to be in a new place. We've both never been here before. And I know it's wild to literally sign a lease via online and to just be like, yeah, this is home now. But I think that a big reason why we are just ready to move and why we were so spontaneous about it is because we kind of exhausted all of our options as to where we could live in Kansas. And like I said, I love that I was born and raised there, but I think 
think that our little souls are so adventurous that we want to be able to travel and do new things and try new places out. It felt as though like when we were living in the house, it was like the next step of living in Kansas was like buying a house there and then settling down and having kids. And it's just like, even in the best area in Kansas, it just didn't feel right for us to do that. You know what I mean? So it needed to happen. We didn't know when it would. And I think that we just had to rip the bandaid off. Full send it is what I keep saying. And I knew that it would work out the way it was supposed to, but gosh, it was a big mental block in the midst of all of this. We've been here for about five days and we got our fridge installed and all of that. So it's honestly just been amazing. And like I said, we feel so welcome here already. And Bronx, a lot of people are curious, does Bronx like the house? He loves it. He has been napping in every single room. I think he's testing them out to see which one he likes the best. Cause I found him in two of the guest bedrooms already. And he's just living his best life. And I'm just happy that he's excited and he's happy and he has a new place to adventure and things like that. But Let's get into some of your guys' questions because I know you asked a whole bunch of them. Did you move all of your home gym to Texas with you? So I was actually contemplating doing this and I was ready to do it, um, but I decided that it would probably be easier if I came with nothing in terms of home gym equipment, such as my cable machine and my squat rack. And then if I test out some gyms and I still want a home gym, then I was just gonna buy stuff here, but we could have brought it, but I think that it made the moving process a lot easier. I was really happy because I asked my aunt, she manages a gym actually, and I said, do you know anybody that might want like a squat rack or some gym equipment and she said yeah the owner of her gym went ahead and bought it so that was super simple my cable machine went to a father and a son he said they already had like a gymnastics area for their daughter but they didn't have like a weight room for their son so i was happy because they went to really cool places and i think that they will have a great life there are you thinking of buying a home here in houston or still filling this city out i had a lot of questions asking if we bought or if we're renting so we're currently renting because like i said we had never visited this place before so just wanted to get a grasp on the area and to understand like the place that we're in and see where we like to be at and to venture a little bit more before committing to buying a house but that's definitely going to be like our next step i think and honestly as soon as we got here we were both like yeah we can see a future here in terms of like a house and stuff like that did we visit texas before moving we did not we never had come to houston together the last time that i was actually in houston was in 2019 for the houston gymshark pop-up and i never adventured there or anything like that so it was really like a sporadic spontaneous like god keep us keep us in line type of thing like all of our trust was literally in god will you do a house tour so you guys will see a ton of the house i'm sure and i'm gonna take you guys along with me i wanted to make sure that i put this video up first so i can be like hi and a new place rather than just throwing this on you guys on youtube because i know a lot of you guys while you follow me on instagram and tiktok you might only pay attention to youtube so this is the life update but i'll show you guys around more than you probably want to see how long ago did you plan the move a little less than a month ago actually is when we decided that we were going to move what made y'all move to houston i wish that i could say like this is exactly the reason but like i said it was very spontaneous um we wanted to be around a more diverse group of people that was a big thing especially with jj being from the south South, I was like, I can't keep you in Kansas forever. And I also want to see something new. So diversity was a big thing for us. In addition to being near a big city and being able to experience like the things that that large city has to offer. Also, we're closer to his family and we're in the center of where my family is as well. I don't know. It just felt right. Once it came up, it was like, wait a second. Houston sounds right because we've thrown around the idea of Florida so many times, but we've never been able to pinpoint exactly where we wanted to be when we go to Florida. For some reason, Houston just felt right. And so far it's feeling great. How has moving into the new house inspired you to do anything different or new? Definitely it has inspired me to get out of the house more. A lot of you guys know another question was, how's your seasonal depression? How do you think it'll be this year? You guys know that I am definitely a homebody, but I know that there are so many people my age out here. A lot of people on social media are out here. And I think that just kind of having a community of people that do the same thing as me will be really interesting because I hadn't had that in Kansas or my whole life, I suppose, unless I was going to like Gymshark events or work, things like that. I'm excited to see the type of communities that are out here. I'm excited to try to scout for a new gym and all of that good stuff. I think it's just inspired me to like start this new chapter and to put my best foot forward and to just continuously grow. And I think that we really needed a move in order to do that for ourselves. Houston meetups in the future. I would love to do a Houston meetup, honestly. Do you think Texas will improve your seasonal affective disorder and seasonal depression? Do you already feel better? Yes, yes, and yes. It's crazy. I made sure that we filled our prescriptions going into the fall season before we left. And honestly, it's just such a world of difference. Although we're getting into the fall season, just 
just having this lingering warmth and sun feels so good for my mental health and I haven't had any blip of like, oh my gosh, did we make a mistake by coming here because of our mental health. We could not do another winter in Kansas. We truly could not. I think that having this new place around the holidays and around the fall time is exactly what we needed. So we're feeling great already and I'm very optimistic about how our mental health will be this coming year. Biggest fear leaving Kansas. I don't know if it was necessarily a fear. I didn't feel like we were going to regret it or anything like that. I think the only thing that I was just a little bit bittersweet about is really leaving the people that we were closest to there because we built so many memories and that's where JJ and I met was in Kansas and I had never met him. Who knows what my life would have been like, but it wasn't necessarily a fear, but it's just that bittersweet feeling of leaving those things behind. Do either of y'all have family in Houston or is it a completely new start? So it is a completely new start for us, but like I said, we have friends that are here and in Texas and in the area. So it doesn't feel like we're really far from home and we can do, okay. And we can do all of the same things that we did back in Kansas, such as hosting our friends and having Thanksgiving here and all of that good stuff, which is something that we really, really like to do and that really fulfills us. And we love having our support system and our people close to us. Do you think you'll ever visit or be in the Kansas City area again? I'm sure there will be something that brings me back there. I'm not sure when, and I'm not sure what it will be, but I, I don't think that I'm gone forever from Kansas entirely. That's where our roots are, honestly. That's where we started. We both are alumni from two Kansas colleges. So I'm sure we'll find a reason to go back there. This boy is hilarious. Any plans on going back to school? As soon as I graduated college, I was done. Okay, I got my bachelor, I have my associate. I'm done with school, I don't plan on going back. I really loved this transition of not being in school and being able to figure out how to use my time and my free time in a way that really like fulfills me and makes me happy. And I think that it'll be a cool journey to experience here as well because this just makes it real and makes it feel like I really am fully out of school. Like I'm not even in the state where I went to school anymore you know we'd be coming to the Gymshark store in London anytime soon so I don't have any plans to come quite yet but I actually was supposed to go in October it was supposed to be at the end of September where they opened the store and I was down to go to that I was locked in to go to that and then things changed the day got pushed back to like the 26th through the 31st and we hadn't even decided we were gonna move yet so that's why i was so locked in for like the september date then when the october date came up that would have been like three days after i got back from whitney's wedding as much as i would have loved to go to the store opening that would have made me so happy to be able to see you guys out there in london it just didn't work out time wise and obviously as soon as we chose to move it was just something that couldn't happen but i do hope that i get to make another trip out to london to see you guys out there i'm just happy that i was able to sit down and film this for you guys because I've had a lot of content kind of stocked up. I haven't had a second to even edit it or really talk to you guys about much at all. So it feels good to be sitting here and talking to you guys again. I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, hanging on and hanging out with me. I have never been MIA from social media for that long before and it felt really weird, but it made me feel refreshed and really ready to hit the ground running with all of my content and to share all of this new stuff with you guys. We wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't be able to move without the help and support of you guys. I hope that you know how valuable you are to me, JJ and Bronx, my family. I am so grateful that this is my life and I get to share this experience with you guys. A lot of you guys have followed me since I was like 12 or 13 and a lot of you guys have followed me since 2016. So for like six years, even longer than that. And it's really cool to be able to do this and to just like bring you guys with me. You guys know I wouldn't be able to do it without your support. So just know that it doesn't go unnoticed. I know that I would not be here if I didn't have my community and I didn't have you guys. I had so so, so many messages from you guys asking like, hey, I know that you haven't posted in a few days. Are you doing okay? I hope you're doing all right. Just those messages checking in really made me happy and it made me appreciate the community that I've built because you guys are literally just like me. I swear I'm no different. And I hope that you know that whatever I do in life, I don't want to make it seem unattainable at all. I feel like I'm just very blessed to be able to live this life and for this to be my job and to be able to relocate and just to decide, hey, let's move to a new state and a new city. For everybody that's like, oh, I wanna start social media. I promise you I wouldn't be here without starting. Let this be the encouragement that you guys need to do anything. If you are just like waiting for a sign to tell you to go do something or to try something new, let this be it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Love you guys more than life itself, I swear to you. So many moving vlogs coming. We're gonna have a lot of different deliveries. I've been ordering stuff like crazy. Crazy. So I'm gonna take you guys along in the whole process, but I felt like I needed to have like a little sit down video Give you a whole update of where I've been and what's been going on lately It's been awesome and I'm so excited for this new season this new chapter and this new journey to spend with you guys 
So I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys did enjoy this video or if you guys like my content, you follow me anywhere, I would love if you guys would subscribe. You guys can also keep up with me every single day on Instagram and TikTok at Libby Christensen. And I will talk to you guys later.